When we think about CSS variables, we often think about reusability, but there's another big use case that they unlock, and that's micro interactions and cool hover effects. This works by interacting with some parent instance and modifying any of the children values. In this video, we're going to be creating this interaction that when you hover over these menu links, these child instances change. So we've got an SVG color changing, a background color coming in, the arrows moving from left to right with an opacity. And just to show you the builder, I'm hovering over the link here and I'm changing the different values of the children. We're going to do this in four steps. The first one is just taking a mental note of the different values and styles we want to change for the children. After that, we're going to create a variable for each style we want to change on the parent. Then we are going to attach those variables to the children. And finally, we are going to give those variables some values for both the default state and the hover state. It might sound like a lot, but it's actually pretty simple. Step one, let's take a mental note of the style changes we want to make. So we've got a background color coming in and out. We've got the SVG color changing. The arrow is going to have an opacity and the arrow is also going to translate a little bit left to right. So those are four different styles. And that is it for step one. Step two, we need to create variables for each of those styles. So I'm on my link right here and I'm going to select my nav link token and apply them to this token so I could reuse the token for each one of my links and head down to the advanced section. And I'm going to create my first variable and I'm going to call it nav icon BG for background. And then I'm going to create my second variable and I need to give that SVG a color. So let's call it nav icon color. The names are arbitrary. I'm just trying to keep it to something I'll recognize. Then our third one is going to be nav arrow opacity and our fourth one nav arrow translate. So for step two, all we're doing is creating the variables. We haven't even applied values to them yet. So let's check this one off and move on to step three, which is adding the variables we just created to the different children we want to impact. So I'm going to head down to the icon and then apply these variables. So for the background, I'm going to grab that nav icon BG. And then for the color, I'm going to grab that nav icon color. And then let's go to our arrow and apply the two variables that we created for this. One of them was opacity, which is down in advanced. And let's grab our nav arrow opacity. And we're also going to add that transform translate. And on the X axis, so it moves from left to right, we want that uh, nav arrow translate. Nothing's going to happen yet. All we've done is added these variables that don't have values to the children, but that's it for step three. Now, the last step is when we're going to start seeing those changes apply and because we are applying styles to the variables. So back up to the parent. Now let's give our variables some values. I'm on the default state right now, meaning it's not hovered. This is just going to be what are they when we're not interacting with it. My translate is going to be, uh, let's try negative three pixels. It's just going to move it over a little bit. So when it hovers, it kind of comes in from left to right. And the opacity, I want it by default to not show. And I just need to change pixels to just nothing. And so now my arrow's hidden because we aren't hovering over it. Once we do hover over it, that's when the opacity is going to turn into one. And we'll do that next. Icon color. Let's grab gray and let's maybe uh, dim it down a little bit. We'll do gray three and then the icon background. I'm just going to do transparent because I don't want a background by default. OK, so those are our default styles. They generally didn't do too much except for hiding the arrow. But now is where the magic is going to happen. I'm going to go to my token or if you're using local, you can go to local and select the hover state. You can see the variables are here and they're orange, meaning that they're essentially inheriting their values from that default state. But let's change them to be how we want them on the hover state. I'm first going to do opacity just so I can see what I'm working with. So we're going to set this to one. And now we can see that the arrow is here because this one has the hover state triggered. And for our translate, I want to set it to zero pixels. So it's going to go into back to its default state. Icon color. Let's make it maybe a little brighter. Let's try that. And then for the background, We'll go down here. OK, now I am going to hover over some of these and we can see that our styles are coming in and out. All the styles are applying, but it's a little choppy because we don't have transitions on them. So let's just knock that out while we're at it. We're going to go to the instances that are changing. So this icon and I'm going to add a transition and we're changing two values, the background color. And then the other one is the color of the SVG. So this will just make sure that they don't just go choppy. They'll translate over 200 milliseconds. And now when I hover over it, it gives that nice smooth effect. And let's do the same thing for our other icon, the arrow. At a transition here, we were 
changing two properties. One of them was opacity, which is already selected. And the other one is translate. And we'll just leave the default values now. Let's preview and see what we're working with. Now when we hover over these, the, all of the different changes are translating in a very smooth way. And our values have been added. We're able to create this micro interaction by just kind of taking a mental note of figuring out what styles do we want to change on hover or whatever the interaction is. Then we created variables without assigning them values yet. And then after that, we put the variables on the children. We didn't assign the values right away because I like to have them on the children first. So when we move to step four and start modifying the values, those variables are already on the children. So we can kind of experiment to see which styles we want to apply and how they look in real time. And that is how you use CSS variables to add micro interactions and cool hover effects to Web Studio. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.